Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to the top 10 fast food failures. It's rare that a fast food restaurant, you know, let's let's take McDonald's for example, before they release a product they're going to do all the research, you know, that required to find out if it's going to be successful or not. I can't think of something honestly that McDonald's have brought out that wasn't a success. Like even the McRib, like whenever they bring that out, it's always massively popular. I don't know why the McRib isn't a, um, uh, you know, 100% uh, like always available product. Although to be fair, I've not eaten at McDonald's for a long time now, to be honest, it's been like six months. But yeah, like McDonald's usually, they nail it every time. So it's gonna be interesting to see whether it's big fast food ch uh, chains like McDonald's that are featured on this list, or if it's like smaller ones that don't quite have the, you know, budget to like do like research and testing and stuff like that. Burger King got these brand new dinner baskets. Okay, TV. I love wow. this place. Oh, it's not who? Baskets. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 major fast food failures. Annoying just can't be the best. Domino's Pizza, nobody delivers better. For this That's list, good, we're looking fair. at some of the most disastrous fast food products or services that flopped massively and exploring the reason for that crash. Which fast food restaurant is the best? Let what us know that? below. Number 10, Satisfries, Burger King. When French you fries. think of the main food available at fast food places, Burgers. fries will be at the top of that list alongside yeah. the humble burger. The company is doing its best to try and catch up with Wendy's and McDonald's. Things like the Satis Fries, that new product that Burger King is billing as a low calorie, more health conscious French fry. Well, Burger King decided to reinvent the crispy potato with a pun called Satis Fries. It was promoted as a healthy alternative to the standard What's option. What's the difference? However, the advertising wasn't great. Also, the Satis Fries were not that healthy and more expensive, which meant the product didn't last long. BK says they've developed a new coating for this new crinkle cut version that keeps less oil and fat from being absorbed in the frying process. I mm. see. But how much healthier can these fries really be? So Burger King phased them out in 2014. Since we mentioned BK's burgers, they tried to reinvent the classic again with sliders known as burger bundles back in 1987. Within the year, they were gone. They're here. New burger bundles, only at Burger King. Even better tasting, with 50% more cheese. Get them now, before they're gone. The sliders were a problem for the cooks since they fell through the grill. Uh, Number nine, Super Bar. When I don't understand, like, I mean, Burger King just make do what you do make good burgers or decent burgers like the the satisfy to be honest the satisfy is probably a good idea if you can find a way to make french fries that taste just as good but use less oil i think that would actually be really successful <laughs> i'd probably eat them the more but satisfy it's a weird name isn't it it's a weird name satisfy these Everyone likes an all-you-can-eat buffet, just piling your plate like the Tower of Pisa with all the delights on offer. Then filling your bag and pockets to keep you fed for a week. Kidding. Kinda. Anywho, Wendy's had a go in this department with the Super Bar. You've never seen nothing like Wendy's Super Bar. But it wasn't exactly on brand, like a section for Mexican food and a pasta-filled Italian area. There was also a salad bar that contained leafy things and desserts. With delicious foods like Mexican, Italian in our garden spot. Yeah, but no, Wendy's, nobody goes to you for Mexican food. When you're a burger place, like... So you can make a meal that's as individual as you are. Of course, there were hamburgers involved too. Brought in during the late 80s, the Super Bar only cost $2.99. But staff struggled to keep it clean and stocked while customers took advantage of refills. My daughter Wendy said, Dad, the Super Bar is such a great deal, people are going to want to eat here every night. I said, Wendy, that's what we're hoping for. So by 1998, it was gone. Number eight, Hula Burger. $2.99 is soup like you will not find, I don't think you'll find a buffet in any Western country for $2.99. Honestly, even in like the, some really cheap, low cost of living country, two ninety nine for a buffet? Nah, I don't think you'll find it anymore. McDonald's. 
There's already a big debate on whether a pizza should include pineapple, but what about pineapple in a burger instead oh, of a patty? No. Hey, hey, hey. It's some Absolutely thing. not. It's Come on in and say McDonald's Golden Green. Well, that was what McDonald's created back in 1963 Absolutely with the Hula not. Burger. Contained between a bun and slices of cheese, the item was introduced for Catholics during the Lenten season against filet fish McDonald's filet fish sandwich. The filet of fish is honestly one of the best burgers. I mean, fish, whatever you want to call it, oh, it's so. I could probably eat 10 of those. Maybe more. I love it. And considering only one of those is still around, you can probably imagine what happened. The hula was discontinued shortly after its arrival. But that hasn't stopped the chain from trying to sneak pineapple into their burgers over the years. McDonald's also tried changing their game in the 70s with mixed spaghetti. It didn't last long, but can be found in Florida and the spaghetti? Philippines. Spaghetti? <laughs> Number 7. Table Service – Burger King In 1992, Burger King wanted to mix things up at their restaurants. Well, at least between 4 and 8 p.m., as then the table service came into play. She's coming in with the basket. All right. Mm. Does it work for you? Works for me. It's good. BK fans could turn up, order their meals at the counter like usual, but then sit and wait at a table while munching on free popcorn. All right, who ordered the chicken? Who wow. got the whopper in the basket? Uh, you get choice of salad or coleslaw, baked potato or french fries, so you like having it like your way. Yes, my way. Taking as much time as it would be when just waiting at the counter, the order is delivered to the table along with cutlery, condiments, and so on. BK. <sighs> It just, I think it just gives the employees unnecessary work. You know, I think the system now is the best one. Go to the counter, order, get your food, take it to the table. Like, this is, it's not really a restaurant, Burger King. Then added dinner baskets to appeal to a family clientele. The commercials had an edgy 90s style and featured actor Dan Cortez from Veronica's Closet. It's dinner at Burger King, and can you believe? It's table service. These are actual people eating actual dinner baskets at Burger King. But by 1994, the experiment was over and usual service returned. Number yeah. 6. Seafood yeah. Salad – Taco Bell With McDonald's filet fish taking the fast food industry by storm, Taco Bell decided to jump into the ocean and offer the seafood salad in 1986. Introducing new seafood salad from Taco Bell. Fresh vegetables, tender bay shrimp, and a delicious blend of whitefish and snow crab. Advertised as a fresh product, it was essentially a large tortilla bowl that contained taco salad, shrimp, whitefish, and snow crab. But instead of hitting the sweet spot of the collective consciousness of consumers, the product ended up leaving consumers salty, as if something fishy was going on. Did you ever find a burger was this really fish adventurous? This tantalizing. This fresh. It's always hilarious watching these old school commercials. They're so different now. <laughs> like, it's just the, the way that these they're made and stuff is just so different. This tasty. Sorry for the sea puns. According to reports, there were many incidents of food poisoning from the new Taco oh, Bell product. No. So the item was discontinued before more damage could be done to customers and Taco Bell's image. Number 5. Halloween Whopper – Burger King Looking no. to get in on the spooky action, Burger King decided to create the no. Halloween Whopper in 2015. Oh, I'd like the most disgusting looking thing on your menu. That is Would that be weird. the Halloween Whopper? Yes, sir. And just from its appearance, oh, it looks they horrible. nailed the theme with the black bun, while the burger itself was essentially the standard Whopper. Instead of using squid ink to get the mysterious color, BK decided that A1 steak sauce was the best choice. Try the all new Halloween Whopper, dripping with A1 sauce. Oh man, I just don't like it. It just seems unnatural. <laughs> Right now for a limited time. But it wasn't. Especially as it oh, was suspected that. that they used a concentrated form. Consumers soon found that Why when they so saw flat? the burger again, if you catch our meaning, it was neon green. Yep, their uh, poop was visibly more vibrant than before. Uh, How is it? Mm. <laughs> I like it. Pretty tasty? 
With all that bizarre publicity, nah. BK decided not to have the spooky burger back the following season. It's a no from me. Number four, 100 by 100, In-N-Out Burger. Looking for a product to separate themselves from the competition, In-N-Out Burger that? decided on the 3x3 and 4x4. That latter contains four patties and four lots of toppings. It's, it's, uh, it's the only fast food chain that I actually like and think is reasonably good for the world. Well, back in 2004, the chain was a lot more lenient with its menu, as people could request higher numbers. Will Young, not the UK singer. This is I don't know what I'm looking at. It's just a bunch of cheese, like plastic looking cheese went the extra mile in Las Vegas with a 100 by 100. Yep, 100 patties with 100 toppings. Nah. It was a monster. The restaurant fulfilled the order, complete with a makeshift container. It took eight people to get through the mammoth burger. Young was It doesn't look healthy, man. That cheese just does not look like real cheese. It's got this shine to it. It doesn't look like, this looks like plastic. Searched for a double-double with 98 extra patties, coming to $97.66. After this bonkers order, In-N-Out Burger restricted the biggest size to four by four. You guys. <laughs> it Even that is so massive. Heavy. Number That's three, Priazzo, Pizza Hut. Looking to boost sales, Pizza Hut decided to create the Priazzo line in 1985. The company spent $15 million on the commercials that advertised it as being quintessentially Italian. The meats and cheeses blend to create a taste unlike any you've experienced at Pizza Hut. We call that recipe Preazzo Roma Italian Pie. That does look the pie good, consisted of multiple dough bases, a lasagna-like sauce, and a cheese blend with toppings from the four flavors, the standard Roma, the meat-heavy Milano, the cheesy Florentine, and the vegetarian Napoli. In Italy, they have different names for Italian pie. We call it Priazzo, baked fresh every day. That pizza was good. Pizza Hut. It was Can't essentially lie. a mad scientist mix of a quiche, a deep dish pizza, and lasagna. After a strong start and seemingly a success, Pizza Hut quietly removed the product in the early 90s. Why? The reasons are believed to have been due to the expensive equipment needed to make Priazzo and the long cooking and prep time making it not worth it. They weren't baked by someone's grandmother it or looks even good, a though. famous chef. Well, they were made by Pizza Hut. Number two, the Noi. God, it makes me really want a pizza now. I really love pizzas with a thick base, you know, and uh, generous cheese and tomato sauce. I need to get to Chicago and try one of those uh, famous, uh, the, I think they called it the pizza pies. Domino's Pizza. In the 80s, the Noid was a thorn in the side of Domino's Pizza commercials. Have you ever been frustrated because the Noid ruined your pizza? The Noid loves to ruin pizza. The unsettling rabbit-human hybrid tried his best to ruin the chain. But in real life, in 1989, Kenneth Lamar Noid took two Domino employees hostage as he believed the character was about him. After what? the hostages escaped, Noid was admitted to a mental health hospital. Dude. He sadly passed away in 1995. Oh my God. Shortly after, the character of the Noid vanished, only appearing years later in commercials. Call Domino's Pizza and avoid the Noid. <laughs> he thought it was about him. We keep the cold out and all this quality in. Speaking of pizza, in 2015, Pizza Hut took its stuffed crust concept up a notch with hot dog bites. I'm a little speechless. In a good way or a bad way? Because I'm speechless because I'm kind of repulsed. And it wasn't <laughs> great. It was described as overly salty and a, quote, tombstone by some. Tombstone. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell yeah, to get to notified fair, yeah. about our latest videos. You have food, the option it? to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number one, supersizing, McDonald's. Uh. Ah, the 80s, where bad hair and bad choices ran riot. And in 1987, one such choice was McDonald's adding the far bigger supersize option for their meals with their drinks and fries. Big fries, big bite, big guy. Good time, great taste, supersize makes it my place. But all that came crashing down in 2004 with, with the, the release of Morgan Spurlock's documentary Supersize Me. For this experiment, Spurlock had McDonald's for every meal over 30 days. He also had to supersize if an employee asked. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, could I get the uh, double? To be honest, I would love to eat McDonald's every day for a month, but I know it'd be bad for me. To be honest, I think most people know that if you eat McDonald's every single day, it's not going to be good for you. Like, who doesn't know that? Quarter pounder with cheese meal. I think I'm gonna have to go supersize. And they did several times. It didn't take long for Spurlock's health wow, to decline rapidly, with massive weight gain, headaches, and heart palpitations among some of the symptoms. With all the negativity around McDonald's and their supersize option, they binned the sizing option within weeks of the film coming out. It's supersize! Now you can supersize your McDonald's extra value meal with a supersize order of our golden fries plus a large Coke for just 39 cents more. Did you enjoy this video? Check out- For me, the um, the Taco Bell fast food, nah. For me, the Taco Bell seafood salad thing, I mean, multiple food poisonings. I've had food poisoning from fish and it is absolutely horrible. I think, you know, with fish, you've got to be super careful. It's got to be cooked just right. And, you know, if, if it's out of date, it's like one of those things that you just, you should not try and eat. So I'm not surprised. To be honest, the Taco Bell, a company of that size, you would think that they would have that kind of thing on lock, like when it comes to like getting rid of like expired fish. Why is it that so many people got food poisoning? Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.